Let's get chili. There's a pretty universal agreement that chili makes the perfect cold weather meal. But that's where the agreement stops. Wars have been waged, families divided, friends lost over the debate that weighs heavy in our great land. Let's take a quick look at the history and the controversy that's unavoidable in any chili conversation to get the answer we've all been looking for. To be or not to be, that is the question. There are plenty of myths, legends, and tall tales about the origin of chili. One particularly horrendous tale is that the Aztecs cannibalized conquistadors as the meat of their chili in the 1500s. Some say a Spanish nun who never left her convent supernaturally appeared to Native Americans in West Texas in the 1600s and returned with a chili recipe with venison, chili peppers, onions, and tomatoes. Some say immigrants from the Canary Islands brought chili to San Antonio in the 1700s. Chili as we know it today is chili con carne, or chili with meat. This version almost certainly originated in the American West, probably in Texas. It was popular among cowboys and pioneers on the western frontier. In the 1880s, the chili queens of San Antonio began selling it at chili stands, and chili was associated with Texas. In fact, the Texas legislature made it the official state dish in 1977. Meanwhile, chili's popularity spread quickly across the country, and regional versions popped up all over the place. Cincinnati's famous Empress Chili serves a Mediterranean version over spaghetti. Indiana's Hoosier Chili includes macaroni noodles, celery, and kidney beans. You'll find distinct chilies in Oklahoma, Kansas City, and New Mexico, just to name a few. Chili cook-offs are everywhere in Texas, and there's no small debate over what ingredients are allowed in chili. Purists will argue the real chili only contains meat, chilies, and spices. And the ICS, who regulates all major chili cook-offs, considers beans a filler, and they don't allow it in competitions. But many cook-offs have a separate category for regional recipes that may include beans or other ingredients. For more insight on this subject, we wanted to bring in an absolute expert on all things bean. So, we spoke with Sarah Bush Knuckles of the Bush's Baked Beans family. Beans certainly do belong in chili. They're a heart-healthy, plant-based protein and can stretch a meal and make it less expensive. When the San Antonio Chili Queens of 1880 were making their chili, their patrons often ordered a side of beans. This food pairing goes together just like Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Beans are great for the planet and the cans they come in are endlessly recyclable. It's a fact that beans make chili taste great. And if you don't have beans in your chili, you're just eating meat soup. Wow, Sarah, thank you. That's great information. Next, let's go to a longtime professional chuck wagon cook, Arthur Garcia get his take on the beans and chili debate. Arthur, what kind of wisdom can you share on the subject for us? Beans don't belong in chili. Okay, thank you for that. Well, there you have it, folks. The debate rages on. So let us know, do you put beans in your chili or not? And don't worry, we won't tell Arthur and Sarah. <laughs>